Hey everyone, hey, welcome hey. to uh, to Site Club, to uh, Tara by Janine, to Esoteric Atlanta, and to uh, Elizabeth from TikTok. And uh, we may have Huna Flash joining us in a moment, and uh, so uh, maybe Mel as well, but I'm not sure. Um, anyway, it's great to see all you ladies, and uh, it's great to catch up and to do our, our deep dives into the numbers and into the tarot cards and into all the crazy things that are happening. So. Um, Bryce, did you have a question you wanted to kick off with uh, with Janine? I always have so many questions I want to kick off with Janine. I'm actually going to start with one first that is for my channel. Every time I do a Mystery Monday now, all my comments underneath are like, ask Janine, ask Janine, ask Janine. So last Monday, we released a story on the singer Connie Converse, who disappeared in the 70s. And it was very mysterious how she disappeared. She was on TV in the 50s with Walter Cronkite, but her music now is now become like this cult celebrity following um i might have to bleep that word out but <laughs> but anyway uh what my question is people don't know if she removed herself from this world if y'all know what i'm saying she chose to leave or if she decided to take on a new identity she did struggle with things like depression which they did not know about back then there was also speculation that she might have been a lesbian which back then would have been a very different story than it is today and many people think she might possibly still be alive and of course there are people that think there is a uh, ulterior motives with her disappearance because she was loosely connected to people that we now know are on the other side of this game we're playing in the if y'all know what i'm talking about the dark side so and uh so who is who is this person again say the name her name is connie converse she was born and, elizabeth converse okay and are you sure she was born female that was a question some that was something somebody asked they said that she was not that they but the, she she lived such a long time ago or you know yeah, yeah that she, she was, was born a male uh, and she was definitely connected in a family somehow, like dark cult related. Her father was a very strict Baptist pastor. and We've been breaking down the fundamentalists. Yeah. Yeah. So that was right under and she was born a male. So, uh, yeah, let's see. She doesn't look like uh, she took herself off the earth plane. Is that what's being said? That's one of the speculations. Nobody knows what's, what's happened to her. Okay. It had some something to do with her father or some a figure a male figure uh that was uh dominating her life oh wow so somehow uh she was like somehow a prisoner to that energy somehow okay but that that goes along with those dark dark cultures right yeah that's so fascinating somebody mm -hmm. suspected that in a comment so and she came from a very strict um fundamentalist family which we know all these organizations have their ties even though they yeah. might from the you know general public might seem to be like good they're not so that's fascinating yeah bless her heart or his heart they that they she, live a very rough life yeah they feel like they might have escaped uh because we've got this and this i feel like somebody helped her escape uh the clutches of the the dominating figure. Usually the emperor I've been seeing as good, but not when you ask a question like that and it's uh, clarified by that. So these two together can be very difficult. So the emperors, uh, somebody who might be emperoring, lording over someone and with uh, dark cult practices, probably from birth, because it was underneath her as a male from birth. So she was born into a family that maybe SRA was present and things like that. And uh, she had help escaping by a plan that played out. So her end of her life was probably, I mean, I'm assuming she's passed now because she would be close to a hundred at this point, but there was a possibility the end of her life was better than the first part of her life. Yeah, she lived in hiding uh, for at least 18 years is what I get. Does that make any sense? Yes, yes, that does. And her music was very sorrowful. So, so y'all want to check out Connie Converse's music. That's fascinating, Janine. Thank you so much. My subscribers will absolutely love hearing that. Thank you. Okay, right on. Right.
Christ, is she's not related at all to the Converse trainer company, the Empire? I don't she? think so. I didn't find any connection in my research um, between her and her family and the actual Converse family. Um, I would assume that the Converse last name at one point might have been not a common last name, but maybe a, not as rare as we think it is. And it's just mm. a similar last name. Um, but I didn't, that didn't come across any of that in my research, but that would be fascinating if they, there was a relationship because we know that's a huge um, company. Brand. I don't yeah. know, you need, would the cards tell us if they were related to that, the Converse family? Looks like they were, because hmm. oh. uh, that would be celebrating abundance. I said, what, what, what was the connection with the name and the brand? So abundant. So that's a big ab abundant brand. Okay. So, yeah, I think they were awesome. Uh -huh. Makes sense. Yeah. And her name, so it's, it's Elizabeth Converse, but goes by Connie. Is that right? It goes by Connie. Um, her for, when she ran off to New York, she was in, in university, and then she ran off to New York uh, in like the fifties, and she changed her first name to Connie. Um, okay. her friends were calling her Connie as a, a rip off of her last name, and so she, her friends called her Connie, but her birth name was Elizabeth or her. Her uh, new birth name was Elizabeth. Yeah, yeah. So. And Con Connie is C-O-N-N-I-E. Is that right? Okay. Well, Elizabeth Converse. Elizabeth is really interesting. ATH Trump. Uh, Converse is 101. Comes to uh, system. Comes to Melchizedek. Um, interesting enough, the, the soccer player here in the UK that's on the front and back pages of the newspaper because of the Euros uh, is, uh, is Harry Kane. Comes to 101. But if you do Elizabeth Converse, it takes you to 189. 189 is um, July the 4th, and we've just had July the 4th. So, so that uh, seems appropriate that you've asked that. So, yeah. Um, cool. cool. Awesome. Hi, Huna. <laughs> we saw you pop in. Hello. Huna's here. Let me, there he is. We'll give him an intro. We just we just introduced you, buddy, but we'll, we'll, we'll introduce you now. So, so this is Huna Flash. So I've done a number of episodes with Huna. So we wanted to invite Huna into our round table. He likes to call his versions a bit light table. So um, Huna, this is Janine. Janine, this is Huna. Huna, this is Bryce. Bryce, this is Huna. Elizabeth, this is Huna. Huna, this is Elizabeth. So uh, welcome. Nice to meet you all. Thank you. Thank, thanks for being here. We appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, thank you for um, having me. Um, Tom, good to see you. Um, good to see you, buddy. Good to meet you. I'm all. loving the, uh, I'm loving the threads today, man. Very good. Oh, this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> you can look good in it. You probably look good in a, in a bin liner if you had to, buddy. But that is great. So you know. Uh, I don't know, but <laughs> you can skip the thong. All right. <laughs> <laughs> skip the thong. Um, no, just uh, well, it's good to be here, and uh, and I have. Uh, um, uh, followed a little bit for Janine and, and Bryce. Um, Michelle, is it? I, I, Elizabeth. I, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Sorry, I, I'm sorry, I don't know you, but nice to meet you. And she shared, kind of the, she the, shared the platform with you for the President Trump birthday message. So she was, um, she's a big TikToker. Oh, and, I see. Uh, she's the young patriot, one who so, does yeah. the whole TikTok thing. <laughs> yeah, she's got all that down. So. <laughs> On the 4th of July, Tom and I were like, no, tell us about this TikTok. <laughs> Showing our age. So she's the young one. <laughs> Elizabeth, did you have a question for Janine you wanted to ask? Yeah, I just came up with one. So recently I, uh, I saw a video on TikTok that was saying that Joan Rivers is possibly still alive. Um, yeah. So my kind of question is, is she? And if she is, um, was her whole, you know, because she, she kind of outed M Michelle or Big Mike, whatever, <laughs> whoever you want to call her. Um, she kind of outed her. And then, you know, it was said that she passed after that. So I was kind of wondering if that was part of the movie um, or, you know, that. That's kind of. <laughs> She's hiding. Mm -hmm. She's hiding from. Uh, these guys. So that's our state card, dark cult card. She's oh. hiding from, and she was placed to out. She was right. intended to, she had a mission to out Big Mike. Gotcha. <laughs> and it put her in jeopardy because that was before they rounded those guys up. Yeah. 
put her in jeopardy. So uh, it's going to be hard for her to come back out. And she's not in the greatest of health is what I'm getting. Is yeah, it's here. So she might not resurface. Gotcha. The video but, I've seen is her she's she's hiding from the camera. But someone took the little the shot that they got of her and matched it directly to another picture of her when she was alive. And I was like, that's very convincing. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I never, you know, looked into it otherwise. But that's super interesting. I remember yeah, she was, there's a, go go on, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I remember what that when that happened, and it was almost like she kind of started to plant a seed in people's head. Yeah. Because that was before anything had been exposed. That was before number 16 plus one. That was before any of that. And so her saying that, it was like on TMZ, like a big yeah. tabloid. You know, it kind of started planting seeds in people's heads, whether they knew it or not. And that's important, I think, in any type of change where you have to plant these seeds first for a lot of people yeah. before the, you know, the table can be knocked over, you know, before people are ready to see the whole big picture, if that makes sense. So I feel like yeah. we're going to be shocked by the amount of people that are a part of the movie and obviously the ones that aren't. <laughs> um, but I, I'm I'm getting more surprised by the people that actually are a part of the movie and part of the plan, which is yeah. encouraging. Yeah. There was that clip that you're referring to, I think, um, Elizabeth. It was with, uh, is it Clive Davis, the, the uh, big producer? The I think he's... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they got into the car and she was trying to hush away, but it looked like it was probably set up. And there was even a guy that looked very similar to Vincent Fushka, the guy with the hat that's supposed to be maybe... JFK Jr., etc. But he was there. Well, someone that looked like him was there. So it was all very quite interesting. And you remember that Joan Rivers was on, she was on The Apprentice for President Trump. So she knows him. And there's all of that. And I've just done her numbers. So thanks for bringing her up because Joan comes, if Joan is J O A N, isn't it? That's correct. J O A N. Mm -hmm. So that comes to 40, which comes to RV. Rivers. So River is 72, which is money, which is first, like America first, Monday. But you add the S, takes you to 91. 91 comes to POTUS, comes to Future, comes to Liberty, comes to Space Force. Add those together, comes to 131. 131 comes to John F. Kennedy. And I always mention this, but at the end of Back to the Future 3, the train, the Trump train, is number 131. And there's a lot of characters on the board for 131. So that's another beautiful one that you just brought up there, Elizabeth. So Joan Rivers, 131. So maybe we'll see her very close at the end. But... Who knows? Yeah. Maybe she got from the med bed. We'll see. You know. There you go. <laughs> Huna, over to you, buddy. You have a question for Janine? Well, um, uh, I, I did know I forgot it, <laughs> so I was um, wanting to just kind of settle in for a moment here and just see. All right, buddy. Yeah, take it. What, take what, take, uh, uh, take what, the what breath. The and, platform, yeah. platform is doing here. <clears throat> I, I, yeah. I understand uh, uh, the, the movies. You know, um, the movie's being played out. And, and well, lately we've been seeing, I've been watching a lot of Netflix, but just researching. Let me say researching, not really, uh, you know, watching, but researching and seeing some very interesting um, uh, pieces that, that are correlating here with what's happening now uh, that had been filmed earlier. So I'm just kind of just grounding into this if I can. For my yeah, month, maybe I'll remember my question. Yeah, yeah. Whenever, whenever. I had a question for Janine about a month ago. <laughs> 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 I come Janine, back. talking about other other people that may be in the movie and resurfacing and whether they're good or bad, etc. I think Bryce was saying that you've mentioned this lady before, and others have been saying it. So um, <laughs> I might not say her name right, but AOC Cortez. Can you can you do a little more, little bit more on that? on your findings because others might not have seen it when you spoke about her previously. So I wouldn't have thought in a million years, uh, yeah. like Bryce, that surprised me, but I got yeah. a tip from uh, Michael Jaco actually, who was absolutely okay. sure uh, that she was, and he seemed to even have intel. I can't say for sure he did, but he sure seemed like he was absolutely sure. She yeah. was a part of the movie and an actress. Well, the actress part, it, already everybody was thinking that because she didn't seem like a politician. She seemed more like an actress. And a lot of people have said that, uh, you know, ha have even traced her back to various different things. So I think that part's true regardless. And then I did a layout on it 
on uh, Tarot by Janine. And sure enough, she did look like uh, she was part of the movie and placed where she was to actually make the, the Dems look bad, actually, uh, which she did or is doing and a great job because yeah. she's making them look absolutely absurd with their yeah. so far left that uh, that it, it, it's dangerous, you know, like that kind of left. And I'm not saying there's a lot of policies that yeah. are ba- like started out to be good that you yeah. left policies. Right. And my whole life, I was like a peace loving hippie. So, you know <laughs> what I mean? I, I love trees and all that kind of stuff. And I hug trees and I love nature. So I was actually considered like somebody who would have thought the left was the way to go. I was definitely not considered yeah. a, a right leaning person. I would be like a peace loving hippie leftist. Okay. Yeah. But, but then when I realized it'd been hijacked by absolutely uh scary forces and used against humans and taken way too far and like so they take good things and invert them that's what the 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 bad guys do you know yeah i'm just gonna call them the bad guys because we got to be careful so the bad guys literally ruined anything good that could have been considered so i'm not i'm just trying to say there was some good things but then they took it and then they went way over here and turned it against us and that's the, where the problem is and what a lot of lefties have to figure out who think they were left and that's why they're having a lot of trouble going over here yeah. seeing mr t is a good guy because they were spent their whole life uh, trying to be more like liberal okay but that word's now been hijacked too so it's like oh my goodness like what we thought yeah. was good was actually uh taking all our rights away we thought we were looking for more rights and it actually went completely off scale and uh over and we took away rights entirely where you thought you were doing some good in the world and trying to make the world more tolerant and it, it turned out to be the exact opposite which is exactly yeah. what our cult does we're going to call it the yeah that's what yeah, they, yeah. they exactly. uh, is flip everything and uh, turn it into demonic. Yeah. Right. Uh, so what were we asking again? <laughs> oh, they oh just, I think you clarified it really. It was just, yeah. it was because we, I haven't seen what yeah. you said about it, but you've given a great summary of that. Um, yeah. I've got one to ask about actually one character also as well. Um, I saw uh, a gentleman by the name of uh, negative 48 talk about the same thing as well. So he said exactly the same thing. Um, and when you said tree, tree comes to 48, which comes to Tom. So he's like, well, virtue hugs, there you go. And if you do trees, like you say, you love trees, trees comes to 67, which is exchange, which is water and reset. So I wanted to put that out there. So um, Matt Hancock. So Matt Hancock has famously stepped down or been part of the movie, us to be stepped down about 10 days ago, nine or 10 days ago here in England. There's thoughts now going around that he may be arrested very soon for crimes against humanity, and I guess that would be a public thing. Can you see anything on that? Is, is he going to be? Is that going to be part of, you know, one of the triggers to set things off? Matt Hancock going down. He looks like he's already rounded up to me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, maybe. Claire, uh, in terms of a public a public offering a, pu- a public view on that yeah yeah he's i don't concur that he's probably been taken else. ages ago he's been Sorry. taken already uh i'm not get i'm not necessarily getting that i get that might be a consideration but they, okay. they're, they're gonna they're being cautious about things like that i think they really want to make sure they being maybe the alliance or uh people yeah. work on the behalf of humanity or the white hats or whatever lots of names you could call them um i believe they want to be super cautious so as not to do anything too alarming or i guess even that word is bad for the algorithms but if you can imagine uh, but they don't want to do anything that'll um tip the boat too much until they're sure it'll be well received. So that's why we haven't seen those public takedowns. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a timing thing again. Yeah. uh, Time. I hope it's, I hope it's uh, really soon myself too. Like I'm, I'm ready to just take them all down in public, but uh, (laughs) I don't think uh, the good guys think that's a good idea just yet, but they're concerned because that card's being cautious careful and slowly considering something and this card considers from a safe so they're on a safe platform and they're looking okay. out at it as an uh, they're think, thinking it's a potential 
and they know that a lot of the truthers would love it and celebrate, but then there's yeah. a bunch of other people that might uh, think it was like they wouldn't understand yet. Okay. We've been handling humanity with kid gloves, you yeah. know, you don't want to upset. Yeah. And we know, yeah. we know that I believe that most people are pretty level headed and can, even if they're not like uh, totally where we are in awareness, they know something's wrong, but you have, it's like the squeaky will gets the oil. You have these people that will literally like lose their mind if their illusion is crumbled. And those are the people that could hurt us, you know, could go out and just freak out like a temper tantrum. And so I guess that's why they're in charge and we're not, because I would have already, I would have already pulled the plug by now. <laughs> I guess that's yeah, why pull that plug. <laughs> pull that. So, so, you said, yeah. uh, you said alarm, Janine, and that was, that is interesting because that comes to 45 and President Trump is the 45th president. And 45 also comes to effect, like the domino effect um, or the ripple effect. Um, but also it comes to spades. So the suit of spades and the deck of cards, spade is the most powerful spiritual card. Um, and that's 45, which is, you know, POTUS 45. But if you do uh, alarm Ming, it takes you to 75, but that also comes to funding, which makes me think of the RV, et cetera. And President Trump said, way back last year, he said 75 is a very important number. He said it, he said 75 is a very important number. And he was talking about the, the quantum uh, uh, computers that they put together, that they, that they publicly told the people that they, these, these quantum centers that they, they'd, uh, they'd put together and announced, but they were funded at $75 million each. But the word funding comes to 75, and he, he emphasized it. He said it's very important that the number 75. And now, now he is a 75 as well, which is obviously important as well. I have a question. Hey, who knows? There he is. Go for it, man. <laughs> I, I remembered now. Um, so, Janine, um, I represent the house of Huna, which Huna's, Huna means one in the many, many in the one, one light in the many, many lights in the one. It's our society of um, quantum healers and expansionists and, and, and spiritual ceremonial people who are skilled in, in the light arts, let me say. We know all about the dark arts. We also know all about the light arts. Now, I just, I have a few questions, but I'll just start with this, this one and maybe spread a couple out because I, I had, a, um, had a question for you. Now, the, the, can I say the dark places underground and in the tunnels? Yeah, we know what that means. It? Just say that. Yeah, we know what that means. Yeah. Can I say it yeah. on this channel? Like the dumps? I don't know. I don't know if that worries that maybe we should just say the dark places underground. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'd say it anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just it's, said it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's YouTube. <laughs> Bryce, um, can, no. Bryce will believe that one. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can yeah. use any words too, so that's fine. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so Janine, I have Hunas in 29 countries that are aligned, fully aligned, and that uh, I've done ceremonies with in person. And so we're going to the places, the dark places. We're looking for access into the dark places in the tunnels physically to set up our ceremonies to reverse what has been done in those tunnels, and, and, and not just energetically, but these stargates and these portals to close them and raise the frequencies seal them um, uh, to do this recently. Now I will be next week, I will be in the Netherlands with my Hoonas in the Netherlands in The Hague next week, <clears throat> uh, beginning to make our plans. My question is, um, do you see us, the House of Huna, being there in the dark places, in many places around the world to do the sealing work of these stargates and these portals, low vibration, second dimension stuff? It's quite a different question, I'm afraid. So you bet, you oh. bet. That's that's a closure card. It's a full circle, something coming full circle. So that's what you're representing when you ask that question. You're at representing taking the world back to that innocent time before the, what you're calling the dark hats uh, sort of uh, yeah, polluted the world with their insidiousness. You know what I mean? And they're yucky uh, ways, <laughs> you know, for lack of better word, what they've been doing underground, right under our feet and, and, and everywhere in, in, in all these different institutions that we trusted, like 
spiritual institutions and up to the highest levels of any kind of government's all been, was uh, shadowed by this dark hat activity, right? So yes, you're, you guys are huge about it. It's huge. And uh, years and years ago, when I was studying astrology, I remember getting that the indigenous peoples of the world uh, were going to be the ones that step forward in, in this really dark times that we were going to head into. And we, we thought it was around this time, year wise, even when I was studying, we, we were like, it was about 25 years ago, we were studying this and we were like about 25 years or 23 years from now, uh, the world's going into this really dark place. We saw all kinds of things and upheaval. We didn't know it was, uh, you know, deep state dark cult related. We didn't know to call it any of that, but we just knew upheaval. And then it was all going to get cleared over time by groups of healers in particular, First Nations and Indigenous peoples. And uh, they were going to step forward, take their rightful place, because we, you know, anybody who knows about these things would know that those first peoples, uh, like, for instance, North American Indigenous, Australian Indigenous, sounds like you're from an Indigenous community. Is that correct? New Zealand. A first person, right? Uh, so those people were going to take the lead spiritually to really finish off uh, the clearing. And uh, so that's exactly what you're doing. And this is the biggest card in the deck. Oh, and cool. uh, you you have to close off uh, what mm -hmm. these guys have been up to. And they've mostly been targeting, by the way, uh, children and humans from Indigenous communities mm -hmm. uh, because they're have been made to be vulnerable on purpose through all these government things that have happened over hundreds of years, right? So they're made to become vulnerable because billions they're of years, millions yep, of years. billions because their uh, energy is so special to the mm -hmm. dark forces because it's so magical. So they want to keep that down hidden and uh, pillage it for themselves. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm Lemurian, I'm a Lemurian light being. So New Zealand, we are from first Lemuria. And so we've been tracking these guys for a long time, certainly in this lifetime for myself. And, uh, and so there was, uh, you know, the, the red alert came out. Everything was written in red ink this past week. A lot of the intel coming out in the text is written in red ink. So the red dragon energy is what we know as a divine director. And a divine director is an energy source, not necessarily just a dragon, but an energy source that is, that uh, uh, kind of like directs and, and speaks directly to uh, what is going to be done. And so this red ink has been showing up this past week in a lot of the intel online and things. And so um, that's an energy we work with. Obviously, uh, the Lemurian dragon families from the Philippines they're Lemurian dragon families. They're not draconian, but they were infiltrated. And so we, we had been tracking these, uh, the, of course, the, the dark ones. We all do. We, everybody do. We had this experience with them since first Atlantis, which is, there were four Atlantises before, uh, after Lemuria. And so uh, we, all these things started getting distorted. We call it distorted light. And, and you're exactly right. When you say, um, I, I take it back to the time of innocence, I mean, the indigenous people are known as the five root races of humanity from first Lemuria. And, uh, and so taking it back to first Lemuria through these ceremonies and these protocols of our Lemurian based is taking it back to a time before confusion and, um, and a time where there's undistorted, undistorted light. You know? So you just, you were just right on it then. And so thank you. I have a couple more questions. I kind of spread it out over this, this hour, but, um, Una, there's something that came up with on the numbers with that, with what Janine was saying. Um, so when you said D-U-M-B-S, mm. that comes up to 59. And remember, but you know, this everything is a reversal. So Dragon is also 59, which is a reversal. It's Joker card. But if you do um, reversal, the word reversal comes to 100. So it's a full, you know, not a 180, but it's, it's you know, it's hundred percent. It's, it's complete. And like Janine said with that card, it's like, it's, you know, it's a, com it's a completion that needs to be done. But if you add them together, so if you do D-U-M-B-S 59 
add reversal to, comes to 159, which comes to the Chinese elders. And you were talking about that with them, with the dragon families, etc. Yeah. So it all, you know, that all is all connected. Yeah. So talk, talk about uh, just one thing. Um, uh, you know, I work with counterclockwise, right? This Lemurian, that's a relationship to nature. It's just counterclockwise. So it's reversing yeah. everything. When Portugal made their announcement of the Jassara and Nassara, notice that it's moving counterclockwise. So it's going from Portugal back the other direction and coming back around to New Zealand and Australia. So it's actually moving from their west to east and it's going counterclockwise. When I saw that, I just smiled and I laughed, okay. Yeah, we know we're in the age of Lemuria right now, the age of Lemuria 5. Um, that's why we don't speak of Aquarius because that's Atlantis. And so um, as we're sharing, this is very interesting. So everything being reversed and, and um, returning to innocence, returning to the blueprint. So just a, just a little a little note on that, but fantastic. Lemuria 5 comes to 121, comes to, um, it comes to Golden Jubilee, comes to uh -huh. Revelation, comes to Second Coming. In folklore, in popular culture, it comes to Gotham City, Batman, Trump is Batman, Robin, JFK Jr., et cetera, all of that. So yeah, very good. You're right on it. And five is also a reversal. So five is 42. Five oh. and nine, both of them come to 42. 42 is time reversal as well because it's, it's a reversal of the 24-hour clock. So when you, when you said 75 a minute ago, yeah. that's, that's, um, uh, of course, that's 13. Now, 13 uh, is, is, is really 12 around one. And, and, and just recently, in the 28th day calendar of Lemuria, the name of the 13th month has been revealed. The name of the planet is revealed too. So, you know, it was Gaia, no longer Gaia. Right? So the name of the planet is Matia, which means the planet of new light, Matia. You are in Matia now, is the, the light of Matia. So that's how we, we speak to it. But this 13th month, the name of that 13th month is Maita. And this 13th month is a crystal month in the 28-day calendar. And it's very precise, very super intelligent. It's incredible. So when you said 75 and just, the 13 came up, so if you were hearing this name, Matia, M-A-T-E-A, -E this is the Lemurian language. And it's uh, and what you get from that. And then Maita, M-A-I-T-A, -A, which is the 13th month of the 28-day 28, uh, 28 calendar. If you uh, do mm. something, oh, but it's very well. Thirteen is, is ninety nine, which is patriot. It's ascension. It's rapture. Again, going back to comics, uh, Spider Man is ninety nine. Patriot. Uh, Jupiter is ninety nine. If you do thirteenth with the as a 13. T and a, a, the twenty eight yeah. on top, it comes to one twenty seven. One twenty seven comes to uh, uh, the Ace of Spades. So. Um, we Ooh. spoke about the spade and 45, et cetera, that triggered onto 45, uh, to 75. Okay, so that's a, the ace of spades is a, um, the, be, the beginning of the final rotation of the universal nine um, in our, so yeah, so universal. Yeah, ace is nine, the word ace is nine, yeah. Okay, yeah, All right, we're in the last rotation of the nine then, so we knew we speaking there. So this is fantastic. Good news all around. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, this, my questions are a little bit different than everybody else's, obviously. No, but no I, they're great. You know, we, we, I just kind of understand where we're having the, not when I ask the same questions, you know what I mean? Um, but it'll be multidimensional in the event. So, um, yeah. So, I have another question right now. It kind of brings me to a question I had because, you know, we spend, my, my boyfriend and I spend a lot of time in India and where we, my boyfriend has heavily been studying like the Cassiopeians, the Palladians. He's very much that he follows the, the, the law of one. And I noticed, and I'm trying to figure out how to ask this because I don't want this to seem like spiritual manipulation, which I know a lot of CULTs will do, but I know that this is referenced in the Bible and in, in the book of Revelation. And I know that this is also referenced in the raw material, the, the, the law of one. I noticed before we went into shutdown in 2020, Around the age of 34, I started having really bad arthritis. My health was getting really, really bad. I was having, have always had digestive problems. But immediately when we went into our lockdown, all of a sudden my health started to reverse. 
Um, I'm 38 now and I have had no flare ups from arthritis. I feel like I'm getting younger. Even my boyfriend has noticed as well. He also is starting to look younger. And we know, we, we, we kind of figured out that this whole rapture thing that they talk about is really just your vibrational consciousness rising versus the body lifting up into the sky, as terrifying as that would be as the church wants to scare us. Um, and a lot of these spiritual uh, works, not just in, in Christianity, but in other walks of life have talked about when this time comes, human DNA, when the, the, the vibration raises, will be able to heal itself in a lot of ways. We'll almost be able to slow down an aging process. My question is, is this true? And is this starting to happen to some of us? Because I will say, Janine, I even said from your videos last year to now, you look younger as well. Like, I mean, it's, and, and Todd, and we talked, Tom, we talked about it as well. Like you look like people are starting to look younger. I don't know if it's just that we're happier because we understand more or what's going on, but okay. Benjamin Button. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I attribute it to, so I turned 60 and I really accepted my second Saturn return mm -hmm. and I embraced because every 30 years or 29 and a half years in your birth chart, you face a huge life lesson that, I mean, you face them all the time anyway, but in particular, right, the Saturn return. And I took it as, okay, I embraced and dropped everything that wasn't working and jumped on what I knew was truth and gave it my thousand percent. So that's what I attribute it to, because I feel like I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. And uh, I wouldn't do anything different. I'm, I love uh, everything that's happening right now, even though it's really hard. Yeah. It's beautifully revealing and uh, truths being spoken and uh, true uh, healers are showing themselves. And I have two indigenous cultures in my blood as, uh, as well as many European, like I'm like literally a uh, Heinz 57, which I'm actually really proud of. I have so many, yeah. I have European, I have Eastern European, like gypsy blood, what used to be called gypsy, which I know might be derogatory for some people's ears, but I love that word. You know, I think I've got some of that as well. I've been right? I got like uh, Roma, maybe I got all kinds of cool stuff. And then two Canadian indigenous uh, peoples and French Canadian, you know, like, so to me, it's like, we're all coming into ourselves if if that's how we see it. It's not the end of the world. It's the right. end of the repression. Yeah. yeah. Could be the end of times in a way, the end of the dark ones mm -hmm. uh, pillaging us as a human race. So nothing could be more exciting. So it's like our light is able to kind of shine through. And that's what's maybe correcting a lot of some stuff. Why, why people are looking younger or not feeling so bogged down anymore. It's because they're able to step into, there's less confusion in the head. See that magician? So yeah. the way I see that card is this guy's channeling universal love and he's manifesting with it we're starting to realize that we're actual manifestors. Uh, a lot of humans forgot that. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of humans didn't know that some, some of them do know that, but a lot of them didn't. And uh, manifest that that's why we want to, they want to repress us and keep us in the dark in lots of ways in the dark uh, from knowing how powerful we are. We're literal manifestors. And so we're, we're finding our power back. We're, we're getting yeah, our, we're taking our power back. And okay. even the fact that we tolerate like uh, supposed royals, mm -hmm. like really like uh, wake up royals, what we're going to bow to some potentially right. Uh, whatever, whatever right. Elizabeth is like, you just have to feel her energy to know that's nothing good going on there. Right. And, and creepy, creepy, yeah. creepy. And we're like paying for uh, like, the UK is paying for the livelihood of, and Europeans are paying for the livelihood of these like absolutely scary mm -hmm. dark ones. Okay. And they're bowing to them. I, I can't even fathom it. So we're waking up and it's yeah. so exciting. It's so exciting. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Because it, it literally, it has felt like inside for both of us, for my boyfriend and me and for you guys, we see on zoom because we're all just in our own little corners of the world just seems so much. There's just so much more life 
and youth within people now um, yeah. than there was when this all started. And I haven't had an arthritic flare up, knock on wood, since since all this started, you know, mm-hmm. and it does it just feels liberating. Um, so that makes a lot of sense. A lot of sense. I think you said you said something there about um, when you were following up what Bryce had said. So uh, the very first one we did was Elizabeth Congress. And you said uh, your second, well, you said your Saturn return. So Saturn is 93, comes to Flotus, comes to Kingship, comes to Nazareth, comes to uh, Hungary. Me and Bryce spoke about that a few days ago. It comes to Bushnell. Um, return comes to 96, which Huna's mentioned Atlantis, the change, etc. Spaceship comes to 96. Um, February comes to 96. But yeah, those together comes to 189, which comes to Elizabeth Congress. And we did that right at the beginning. And you said her other name, Bryce, is Connie. Yeah. So when, if I heard you correctly, Janine, you said your uh, second Saturn return at first, and then you said uh, Saturn return. Second is 60, it's diamond, it's orange, it's also Connie. So second Saturn return comes to 249. And also Connie Elizabeth Converse comes to 249, which I thought was interesting because we started there. But also you said something really amazing when you talked about Heinz 57. 57... And you mentioned the word magician. So the word magic comes to 33, which is Don, as in Donald Trump. And magician comes to 57, which is also Tesla. So Tesla, the magician, magnets, magnetism, MAGA, et cetera, et cetera. And if you do Heinz 57, I've done this ages ago, but this is a great uh, reminder of it. The word Heinz comes to 62, which is Nikola. So Heinz 57 is literally Nikola Tesla, which comes to 119, which comes to redemption. So, uh, yeah, I thought that was, that was really cool what you brought up there. Yeah. Tom, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, would you mind bringing the number for um, uh, Matea, M-A-T-E-A? M- a- Say that again, please, Huna. M-A-T-E-A. Yeah. M-A-T-E-A, is that correct? Yeah. It means planet okay. of new light, but this is the name of this planet now. But uh, just interesting to see. And I can do it myself, but I'd rather not just. This is fun. <laughs> so well, we- I think we did we did it I, we did it before, but it's a good refresher because I quite remember what it is off the top of my head. No, I, I have never but, spoken of the name of the planet online. Have you not? What's no, the other similar you. word that, that you told me before? You mentioned my tear, but there's other ones that are. You said a few other sounding words that sounded similar to it earlier, but we... Just now? Like today? Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, Mahita. Mahita, maybe it was that then. Yeah. There's one that sounded like that we did before. Anyway, Matia comes to 40, which comes to Joan. So Elizabeth brought up Joan Rivers earlier. And 40 also comes to RV, the revaluations of RV. So it's, you know, again, it's, uh, it's on point there. Yeah. Right. Okay, okay. Okay. Will we be Mahita? told that's the new name? Will, will they ever say, hey, get, will they ever tell us, like, our home's new name is Matia? How will many, that m- Many have been speaking of it lately. We've been sharing it. Um, but, uh, people are still getting the memo on this. So I doubt CNN's going to tell us this. But... <laughs> <laughs> but... I mean, they still have the show We're Gaia, right? right? It's they still have the show Gaia, and Gaia is no more. So hey, they need a new yeah. show. There you go. So we, we should start calling it that, Matia. We live on the planet Matia. Yeah, that's awesome. Did you have a question, Elizabeth? Uh, Elizabeth, you were about to ask one. I think a few no, minutes I was, ago. I was just going to interject and say I can definitely attest to everything that Bryce and Janine are saying because I feel like in the I was in the last like four years or so I've felt. I mean, I'm already young, but at the same time, I feel like, I feel like my mind has just opened so much more and I'm almost surprised at myself, but I was speaking to some friends the other day talking about how much freedom and how much, how powerful I feel in taking responsibility, which is interesting, Um, but just like taking responsibility over my choice, my choices and my, my direction of life, kind of like what Janine was saying. Um, but I just, I've never been at that place in life. Um, and it's very different than what my family does, you know, how my family thinks about things. Um, and cause it's, you know, my 
family's pretty religious and closed minded. Um, and me and my sister both have been on this kind of journey of just like, wait a second, like our minds, like we never thought we would be in this place. But um, I, I'm excited for myself, <laughs> if that makes sense. And I feel like I'm getting younger in my thoughts, in a sense of, you know, it's like maturing backwards. <laughs> you know, I just, I don't know. Backwards, yeah, that's cool. yeah, that's just kind of how I visualize it. But I just wanted to say I can definitely vibe with that for sure. Yeah. yeah re removing what doesn't serve you. Yeah, exactly. Reversing what does not serve you physically as well. Exactly. Yeah. You know, we often say um, the healing is not the focus. The focus is expansion. The byproduct is healing. Yeah. New uh, focus and the expansion can be, of course, your renewed cells. Right. Of course, yeah. That's great. Yeah. I hate to, like, change the vibe to, to more De Debbie Downer stuff, but I have one question quickly. Do you mind, Tom, if I asked Janine just one question? Yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. So um, this is just for, I know Tom lives in a city. Obviously, I live in a big city. We have heard from both Juan and from another person who does like financial stuff. His name is Lou on YouTube, that the cities are about to get crazy and that there's a possibility from the financial guy that we should act if we live in cities, we should think about getting out of cities. Um, and I can see why, given what happened last summer. So my question is, if, if do, A, should we consider getting out of our cities if we need to? And B, if we should, how long of a timeline do we have? It might not get as bad in London as it would here in the United States, but... Interesting. Okay, I, I think a lot of things will change between now and in the next four years around. Okay. So I don't feel imminent rush out of the city. Okay. But I think a lot of things are going to look really, really different we will be a lot closer to nature somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, in the next because that's Mother Earth and nature kind of card in the next so this card is so I, I was looking for urgency or cards that indicate rush the heck out of the city kind of card. no this is careful planning and looking ahead this guy's careful plans and looks ahead so it might not be a, a good uh, bad idea this this card says looking at it from a place of safety so uh, i wouldn't rush uh, i would maybe start planning yeah okay Take time and plan uh, really well you got about in the next four years might be a okay. good idea but I have a, we had months, so <laughs> a lot will change in that time anyway. Okay. We've I already gotta, started planning our move, but I just wanted to see if it was like like imminent, like there was gonna be something happening that needed us to get out before, but okay, good. I'm not getting that per se, but this card says moving out of troubled waters. I think some of that could have been the case, but I, I said, well, what changed? to make it not look urgent. So I'm not saying Wano Savan or they were misleading you or whatever. I'm saying things are moving in a direction that's uh, maybe improved some of that. And okay. what I've been noticing is that things are happening a lot faster. Like uh, what appeared to be 10 days of darkness and really scary uh, event that might shut everything down for 10 to 30 days. And well, when we first started looking at it and then it, lightened and lightened and it feels like we might have some discomforts for a much shorter amount of time it's like as we wake up grow and shift things energetically and accept uh, our responsibility for how things go and intend and visualize we're changing the outcomes by the second Okay. And uh, that's why on my show, I'm mostly talking about how people think about things and to maybe start projecting how they want it to be, not how they fear it's going to be. The more we step away from fear, fears literally the, the uh, tool of uh, the dark hats. Yeah. So uh, if we don't give them our fear and we visualize how we want it to be, we're going to be in a lot better shape. So I feel as more people get on board with that and, and, and realize they create their own destiny and work together, uh, like what the honas, is that the right word? 
are doing? Huna, yeah, Hunas. Hunas, yeah. what the Hunas are doing. So coming together with good leadership um, and uh, as he, groups of healers coming together, working on visualizing and, you know, closing negative portals. And you know what I mean? Like, as we do that work, everything shifts and changes right. for the better. So I don't think it's imminent to, to race out of the city just yet, but, uh, you know, unless you intuitively feel that. Well, we are, we are going to live in Florida, but, um, but just because Florida is awesome right now, but it, we're just getting tired of being in a liberal city anyway. But then we heard all these things and we're like, oh my God, should we just get out now? You know, because if, if things happen, are we going to get stuck here? You know? So, um, but thanks for that. That makes total sense. And yeah, if we, if we, if we stop fearing, my teacher in India always says, why fearing, why fearing? If you stop fearing, you take their power away, you know, yep. and you, you claim that power back because that's just their power. So I told that's awesome. Yeah. Everything's always shifting and changing too. So thanks for that. <laughs> Tell me about have, the 10 days of, sorry, go on, Jenny. I was just going to say, I had to kind of, oh, sorry, Elizabeth, yeah, yeah. question. <laughs> um, uh, so, and it might be the reason why I'm, don't get a definite answer like intuitively it's just because of what you said things are changing with our thought process but um this whole like food shortage thing like I keep saying all this stuff about the food shortage and I go back and forth between like should I prepare or should I not I don't I I don't know where that lies I'm just kind of you know wondering if that's gonna be a thing for any period of time oh it's cer it was certainly planned to be a thing Okay. And I feel like a lot of the plans, just like what happened with the, uh, uh, the scary illness, <laughs> I would call it. Okay. <laughs> that was planned, obviously, to be much more devastating. Yeah. And uh, that didn't turn out. Uh, like, I, I got to be honest, I, I like calling out the dark hats on what a bad job they've been doing. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah, because uh, oh, it's yeah. they're falling flat. Okay, and if more of us believe and trust that, uh, that'll help them fall flat. So let's get on board with that, everybody. Yeah. Right? I like to go. Uh, you guys are really messing up, and maybe you should just throw in the towel because they're literally every one of their little dastardly plans is falling a flat on its yeah. butt, and uh, that includes their weather manipulation. Everybody's on to it. Mm -hmm. Their uh, supposed global warming, which is probably the exact opposite. Nature's doing the exact opposite, as far as I can tell. But I mean, I don't know for sure. Uh, but uh, like nature's way more powerful uh, yeah. than that silly story that they're telling about what we're doing to the earth. And yes, of course, we can improve the way we handle things. Absolutely. But uh, it's, it's nothing like what they're presenting. That's just a, uh, uh, an agenda to funnel money into their uh, their projects that are obviously uh, got some nefarious things going on and they want a ton of money to funnel into it. And that's how they do it through their uh, deep state governments. And I believe all of that's just falling flat, falling flat. And that includes their plan to uh, everybody. They, they got outed all the farmers outed them. They yeah. Were all over TikTok. Every farmer on TikTok yeah. is like, guys, yeah. they're paying us to destroy this, like do something about it. You know, like yeah. they're not, yeah. yeah, I feel like they're literally like, uh, there's going to be some things that are not going to be available. That's what I feel like. And uh, the biggest thing that's going to happen is people are going to come together in communities and help each other, which will actually be very healing and good for humans. Uh, yeah. We had a terrible flood in Calgary. I think it was in 2013 or was it in 2012? I can't remember. And uh, literally it was the best thing that ever happened to the city. And a lot of people might be mad at me for saying that, but I've never seen the city come together in neighborhoods. Like I was cooking for about 120 people a night. So me and about six other people using my place, which still had electricity, yet we flooded on a uh, floor and a half. We flooded, but I, my kitchen was above that. So we still had electricity. We were told to shut it off. We didn't, we just cooked. Oh. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> we cooked. 
And uh, uh, okay. everybody came together, met at my place. We would go to stores that were closed down for days and we would ask them to donate groceries. They did. And uh, we'd take the groceries home. And I've never seen such cooperation that we had big cook camps right in the middle of the city and people would come and eat. And it was the best time Calgary's ever experienced. People were at their thousand percent best. So when really scary things happen and bad things happen, uh, humanity can really step up. It's actually very healing. And uh, if we start looking at it like, okay, I think we're trying to really see what we're really made of and how magical we really are. This is just a huge lesson we created for ourselves uh, to stop being repressed by um, so-called dark hats who, by the way, like I said, are failing at every one of their little dastardly plans. They're kind of pathetic at this point. <laughs> They're kind of pathetic. So, yeah. <laughs> so let's you said about um, you said about the ten days of darkness a few minutes ago, and yeah. um, that's really interesting because I've, I've mentioned this before, maybe not on our shows, but so another another way to look at that. I'm not saying there won't be a ten days of darkness. There could well be um, in the way that it sounds like it's plausible, but also uh, the ten days of darkness equals two, three, three which equals gold-backed digital currency, and it also equals John Fitzgerald Kennedy. And if you just say 10 days of darkness, if you take 33 off, you take the there off, that comes to 200. 200 comes to Mount Rushmore. It comes to um, like a thief in the night, the biblical phrase, and it also comes to Westminster Abbey. So it's interesting that you brought that up and uh, it, it made me think of those, those particular numbers and, and how the, you know, how things are kind of planned and then how they kind of move and evolve. And as, as the collective consciousness is, is increasing, you know, maybe things are going to be happier and gentler quicker. Who knows, you know, hopefully um, I did have a couple of questions for you as well. If we could look at briefly before we wrap up, um, I got a message this week, it was this weekend about the Nuremberg trials and apparently they were starting. Uh, on July 4th um, and the Nuremberg trials come to 182 which is a really important number that's been banded around for a number of different values and meanings uh, one of them is is the inauguration 182 August 15th is 182 Steve Bannon spoke about um, the inauguration on August 15th President Trump's birthday is July sorry is June 14th which comes to 182 as well Cristiano Ronaldo the, the soccer player here in the Euros Euros is 78 Kennedy he did this famous thing with Coca-Cola about a week or two ago, two weeks ago. He moved the Coca-Cola bottles. He had two of them. Coca-Cola is 53 plus 53. And then he got water. Anyway, 53 plus 53 plus water, 76, comes to 182 again. But so I've been looking at 182 for a while, but my friend Ben made me aware of the Nuremberg trial. So I wanted to see what the cards say on that. Um, and then I wanted to look at a particular date when we come out of lockdown here in the UK, if we could do a second part to it. I find it interesting that they'd call it that. Okay. Because isn't that kind of weird? Because we're not, it doesn't it's really work. Yeah. Like style. Maybe it's Nuremberg style trials, but mm. it really doesn't directly relate to Nuremberg, does it? I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't really know right? enough about Isn't it. That... But I, I hear what you're saying about that. It sounds, yeah. it sounds peculiar. Yeah. Yeah, it is kind of weird. Okay, so uh, this card says uh, there's definitely something going on, but uh, the universe doesn't want to give specifics. So that's interesting. Okay. okay. Yeah, it doesn't want to give, and it has something to do with being brought to justice and legal things. So that yeah. trial related for sure. And uh, something in the past has something to do with uh, positive army forces. So armies for the good of humanity. So you know, military rounding up and that sort of thing. I think that would have happened already in the past. So that's already happened. But I feel like it's something that's planned to go ahead at an in, indisclosed, like it's already in the planning and things are happening, but I don't, I don't see it has landed somewhere. And if it has, the universe doesn't want to tell us. So that's awesome. interesting. But there, there's a yes around the questions because aces are yeses. So it's ha going to happen yeah. something like what you're, we're talking about here uh but i feel like there's a lot of secrecy required around it okay yeah, yeah the link the link that was sent out was it said and it was weird because it was on july 4th 
which is significant, but that was a Sunday this year. Um, and it, from the time zone, it seemed like someone was there that was going to allow 100 people to view it. But obviously with all the groups, everything, you know, the 100 people, it was filled up very quickly. So I don't know if that was someone just kind of prompting us or if literally 100 people got to view it, but they said they were, it was the opening statements of the trial. And from the time that it looked like it was opening, it looked like it was going to be out on the West Coast of America. That's what it looked like, which again was quite peculiar. I was like, so is that out in California? Where are they saying this? So there was a lot of peculiarity to it because I couldn't physically see it because the, the Zoom group was only 100 people. And whether that was really 100 people or not that actually got into it, I don't know. So maybe people can put that in the comments. I'm not sure. But it's interesting what you said about that. Yeah, so something's happening. Something's happening, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. it doesn't look like it wants to be specific or that the thing specifically started yet, That what I'm getting. But that's okay. just okay. Also, as well, here in the UK, we're supposed to be kind of ending everything in terms of, well, I say everything, most things in terms of restrictions like social distancing, wearing masks, and all the other nonsense. Seems to be, from what we can hear, they're saying, they're telling us here that it's all going to end on the 19th uh, of July, so July 19th. And I'm just wondering if you could maybe have a, have a look at that, please, and see what you see what you get with that is that you know is there any is there going to be is that the case if there are other things around it what, what's the feel on that well that's an ending card ah okay well that's that's uh looking good it's looking really good, good. yeah i think they were looking for a certain response when they pushed it mm. and they got their response i think that uh, i think they were looking for humans to really step up and they got that with those gatherings you guys had. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like that is what created this to be a, a real thing. So Good. the continued stepping up and saying no to this, I think, yeah. is a real ne necessity. They, they being the powers that be. And it's really interesting because there seems to be off world energy watching what we're doing here. Ah. Can I sneak a question before we go? Yep. Oh. Thanks, Jane. Very oh. cool. Thank you. Yeah, and it's kind of like in that direction. Um, so, yeah, I go to the Netherlands and next week on the 17th. I live in Mexico, in the Yucatan Peninsula. That's where I live. Um, so the 17th, I leave to the Netherlands. Then I, I have workshops. Um, That's a big day, Luna. The, the July city, 17th yeah. is a big well, date, yeah. It's uh, Stargate number 17 as well. So it's aligned to Stargate. Now, that's why I fly on the 17th. Now, um, so I go from the Netherlands. After that meeting's there, I go into the UK. I'm in the UK. On, I arrive on the 21st. So, And then I go to Ireland after a week. And a week in Ireland um, at Tara Hill in Gorey County, uh, Gorey, uh, Wexford County. And then I go to Norway. Now I'm teaching this, the, the, I'm teaching workshops on the 24th dimension and 24 strand DNA activation for the Lemurian golden chakra system. Now, I've done this before. I did it last year and they've been asked me to come back. And so my question, my question is, um, as Tom asked the right question, I'm going to ask the question on, on a direct, uh, kind of a kind of a personal level that um, do you see, do we see my, my travel through being successful all the way through and in back. Because it's kind of like, and I know we want to say yes, right? But I just, uh, <laughs> let's just see what this means, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, because you're going with really good intention and what you're doing is a personal victory for humanity, so you're working for the good of the whole, uh, you're going to have lots of protection and uh, people will come to your aid if you do um, run into some trouble because there will be a few setbacks, uh, but this is only a five. Fives are in the tarot considered temporary setbacks and sort of frustrating. There could be a few holdups and setbacks just because everything, the whole system is just getting back online in a way around flying and everything, right? So it feels like there could be a few, so expect a few delays is what I'm thinking. 
and possibly one in particular could be a four hour delay, which, you know, yeah, so sometimes happens, uh, but generally speaking, really good, really good. And uh, so if you have patience and perseverance, uh, everything ends up being exactly, you get there when you exactly need to be, even though there's a few holdups. Right. Well, thank you. And I'm a bit of a pirate too. So I pirate around everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, um, I think that's kind of answered both the questions in there. So, so or, or one, one other question was for Tom before we go, the numbers for Maita. Now maybe Janine can, can also do something here. Um, Can you spell, M please, Huna? M-A-I-T-A. And it being the 13th month of the Lemurian calendar from the 28 days. M-A-I-T-A. -A. And the fall of the Gregorian calendar as an operating system being replaced by the Lemurian operating system. It's kind of good. It, it seems ancient to me. It seems like it's already been in place yes. on some level. And it was uh, just hidden from us. So on some level, it's just a return back to something is what I'm getting. I don't know if that makes any sense. It does. I've been sharing it for a number of years now, that's 30 plus years. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's taken, people have been purchasing that Lemurian calendar yeah. rapidly off my website Yeah. and living by it. So they're putting the codes into the land, the water and the sky. So. Yeah, yes. mate, uh, am I saying it right, mate? Mate? Ma uh, Maita. Mahita. Mahita, M A I T A. So it comes yeah. to 44. Uh, cool. A is 1, Z is 26. So yeah, it comes to 44, comes to Abraham, comes to faith, comes to hope, um, comes to the word jacks. You know, it's like, you know, President Trump kind of refers to that 44 quite a bit for the gaming when he does things, you know, when he's, when he's playing. And, and uh, bringing everything about. So, yeah, but Abraham Accord, you know, he famously joked about wanting to call the uh, the Abraham Accord, the Donald John Trump Accord, or Donald J. Trump Accord, but he said the press wouldn't like it, so I called it the Abraham Accord, and he was kind of winking at the camera, you know. So, so yeah, Father Abraham, bringing, bringing uh, Jews, Muslims, Christians, everybody all together, you know, so, yeah. So, what, just as I leave here, Maita itself means from the first light, place the first light inside the first crystal, which means the first stone. And this planet being a crystal of, of northern and southern hemispheres, that, that 13th month is an energy that's placed into the light of all civilizations, of all universes. It's not just the 13th month for a 13th for a cycle, it's, it's actually a, and so when you say the Jewish, me and all the cultures and all the religions going into all of their, it's the Christ light of the yeah. 13th month. Yeah, so it's that's but spoken in the Lemurian as Maita. That's a beautiful um, topic to end it today because that's gorgeous. And I would love to do this round table again, guys, especially having both Huna and Janine here, it's like powerful, <laughs> so. Uh, It'd be great to, I mean, I would like to get, connect to, to Janine more and all of you. I mean, I tried to uh, connect to your Instagram, Janine, but didn't uh, happen to connect. And I have a light table which goes live. I do the light table live on my channel. So maybe one day we can do a light table, all of us. And great. Beautiful. I, um, I wanted to say I love that you're using 13 because it's taking back a number that's been uh, taken by the the dark hats, uh, they take all of these things and, and turn them bad and they're not bad. Like oh, they, yeah. they tried to turn tarot bad because they wanted it all to themselves. Yeah. But then good light workers studied tarot, like myself, like some really good people I know. And we took it back as a tool because they don't get to have all the good spiritual tools and turn them evil. Okay, so I love that you took 13 number back too. It's beautiful. The Amen. meaning of the meaning of tarot in, in uh the Marin language, Tak means the first stone of the crystal, and Ro means the extensive, uh, expansive space, the eternal infinite space, Ta Ro. And it's also a very, uh, it's also a root um, a vegetation that we that we consume in Lemuria, in Polynesian Triangle. Most of us 
eat the taro, which is a root, which is a very, very nutritious root. So, mm -hmm. yeah, there you go. It's returning the goodness, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Going back to as well, Huna and Janine, about uh, <clears throat> Matia. Am I saying it right? I'm not sure. Yeah, my son, I tell you, so 44, Abraham, but the oh, whole Mahita, thing of uh, Mahita, sorry, Mahita. So again, and Janine mentions Taro. So Taro comes to 74, 74 comes to Muhammad. So the Muslims, Messiah comes to 74, which is the Jews. And uh, 74 comes to Jesus, which is the Christians. And President Trump did the Abraham Accord, which is 44. And uh, he was age 74 you know, throughout this double period of 2020 and 2021. And now he's become 75, which is, uh, which is funding. Um, and another value that I can't remember we spoke about earlier, but yeah. So yeah, it all, it all dovetails in nicely, you know, um, Tarot, Muhammad, uh, Messiah, Christian, all of it. Sorry, not Christian, Jesus, all of it. You know, they all come together. So yeah. Guys, I hate to cut this short, but I got to jump on another call here. So, <laughs> yeah, it's a good time to cut. Yeah, it's good, good, Bryce. Yeah, it's good. Awesome. But I definitely want to do this again. Um, and I'm going to invite you all to come back again because this is unbelievable i love this i love having all you guys together because this is such a this was such an episode of good news you know so of, of a, the best being yet to come so um so i guess i'll talk to you guys all soon okay thanks right. bryce yeah well Bye. thanks elizabeth thanks janine thanks huna see you mate see you.